In studying biology, we often talk about structure-function relationships. It's such a huge, important uh, topic and idea that runs through everything that we study in biology from, you know, just almost anything that you talk about, the structure of mitochondria and how that helps with the function that it's supposed to carry out, the structure of my small intestine and how it helps my small intestine carry out the functions of maximizing absorption. So there's all kinds of examples that are throughout. So here's a small scale example. If you haven't learned about the nervous system yet, this is going to be kind of hard to understand and picture the, um, the significance of. But it gives you a little idea, and it's in the cell unit at the very beginning at topic one. So again, this is something you should come back to and take a look at a little bit later. So if you understand how nerve cells work, uh, nerve cells or neurons transmit information. They transmit a signal, a sensation, or a pain to help you actually do something about it. So if you zoom in to the axon of one of these nerve cells, this is what you kind of see. So here's the plasma membrane through one side of it and turns out sodium needs to move around potassium needs to move around and they need to switch back into certain places and there's words for this like depolarization and repolarization basically what we need to talk about here is there's one specific type of channel called a potassium channel and we're going to look at the structure of the potassium channel which is kind of what we're looking at over here it's kind of like a ball and tunnel type thing. So you can see um, when this ball is attached in this particular place, it has the ability to exist in a couple of states where the channel is actually closed or where this ball can literally block the channel and the channel can be not activated. So it turns out when no messages are being transmitted across a nerve cell, you end up with no movement of ions but when a message is being transmitted you have sodium that rushes in through sodium channels and then you have potassium that rushes out through potassium channels it flows out down its concentration gradient through a process called facilitated diffusion which you should understand if you talked about any kind of membrane transport already and the process of potassium rushing out is called repolarization so once again it's going to be hard to understand the significance of all of this unless you fully understand how an action potential actually works. But don't get bogged down by this. Right now, we're just focusing on the structure of this particular potassium channel and how it actually helps with its function. What is its function? Its function is to allow potassium to actually move out. So here you can see, actually, this is not the correct diagram. This diagram is showing a supposedly sodium potassium pump but but imagine something like this so if this is a potassium channel actually that is what we're seeing right here here's a potassium channel and then you end up with you have potassium ions that will basically move out you see there's more of them over here there's less of them over here so it's going to be diffusion but it's going to be called facilitated diffusion because it's going down a concentration gradient and because we're using a protein channel to help us a protein channel to help facilitate the process so that's the function and then the structure is just simply that this channel Channel can be open or it can be closed and it can be blocked by this globular subunit so if this globular subunit a glob is just a fancy way to say uh, a ball of amino acids or a protein or a polypeptide can actually physically block the channel and therefore it's closed when we don't need it when we don't need to send a message it can actually be closed off when we need it it can open up and the ions can flow uh, by facilitated diffusion. So structure and function of potassium channels in axons. Axons are the long part of a nerve cell. So if you have a nerve cell, uh, oh my gosh, this is not going to look pretty. Not going to look pretty. But there's a nerve cell. This, people, is the axon. And this over here is a close-up of the axon in one side of that particular membrane.